All right, so today I'm going to show you how to do a front kick. And you're going to need that because zombies are coming at you. No, I'm just going to do a demo here. Boom, boom. So I have it really cranked up, so you do a lot of damage. I thought that would be pretty cool. Let's kill another zombie or two. And then we'll go ahead and get started making your front kick. Cool beans. So I'm not going to start from a fresh world. I'm going to start from this. I'm going to put this link in the description. It's the end of my punch video. We'll add it to our combat system. If I'll put the link in for the punch video, if you want to do that too. But if you just want to start from here, click that, hit these three dots, hit edit. Let's do that. And then you're going to get the exact world that I ended the video on for the punch video. That way you don't have to add anything. You can just start where the video starts. Oh, I was going to pause the video, but it's already up. All righty. Any second now. Cool. All right. That's Ralph. I put body colors on him and I named him Ralph. It was dummy before, right? So let's go ahead and get our kick animation going. Let's see. Plugins, animation editor, click on Ralph. That's the punch, right? So in the workspace, NPCs, Ralph, and him saves. That's our punch, right? So let's go back to Ralph. Click here. Let's add a new one. So hit those three dots. If you see those three dots, hit those. And then go to set animation. No, go to create new animation. Cool. Create new animation. To repeat that. I kind of fumbled. We'll do kick. Sweet. Now set the animation priority to action. Punch has to be action too. So if you actually accidentally sent that again. All right. Nice. Let's get a leg. Put a keyframe. Boom. Awesome. Go out to maybe the sixth frame. Let's lift that leg up a little bit. Ah, oh, there we go. And maybe lift his arms up a little bit. Maybe for some defense. Cool. Get the other one. Lower arm. Yeah. Not quite even. You don't want to have it perfectly even. I want to get that that leg right here, but I can't get it. So I'm going to go to this plus sign down here and then get right lower leg. Now, when I click on right lower leg right there, I can grab that. There we go. Cool. That's not bad. And then we'll go just get another line on the scrubber bar here. I picked a 12th frame. We're going to tighten everything up for speed anyway. Get that lower torso. If we can get that can't quite get it here get the home move and then we'll get that lower torso again now we got it move them up cool maybe we'll get this leg in the air get that lower leg can we get the lower leg i can never get the lower leg hit the plus sign that's left lower leg left lower leg hit that rotate there give it like a little mario thing going right lower leg stretch it out boom that's not bad that's pretty cool let's try it boom slow that's fine let's tighten it up move that back i'll move to the second frame move this to maybe the fourth frame boom sweet all right hit those three dots check your animation priority one more time make sure it's action save it Hit the three dots again. Publish to Roblox. Kick is fine. Submit. Grab that ID. Boom. Close. Cool. Now that we have the ID, let's hurry so we don't lose it. We don't forget about it. Let's go to Starter GUI. That's where in the screen GUI, I put my strike local because I want to use buttons, right? That's why I don't have it in Starter Player. All right, so let's open up Strike Local. You can see the hook anim. Hit the plus sign, add another animation, type A-N if you don't have it, right? If, you, if it doesn't show up. Add another animation. Let's call this front kick anim. Now put that ID right here before we lose it. Boom, ID. Hit enter, and now you'll have the uh, Roblox asset ID prefix uh, added to your ID, and now you have a way to get your published animations. Cool beans. Let's go to strike loke. I know that was kind of rough. Let's go to strike loke. 
take a look at this, right? So you have a lot of code. We have a remote event. So we can talk to the server to add damage, user input service. That's for the key binding. Ooh, we got a hook cooldown. Let's copy that. And then let's make this a front kick cooldown. Front kick cooldown. And I'll make that like 0.4 seconds. Boom. 0.4 seconds. We got a hook key to fire our hooks. We want to do that one for our kicks too. So we'll do a front kick key front kick key and let's make that C because it's really close to the F and our in our movement keys here we get the player from the local player from the players service we get the character from the player we get the humanoid from the character we need the humanoid to add animations here's where we add the hook animation control C boom let's go down and make that what front kick anim front kick anim Let's copy this. We're going to use this a few times. Control C, put it here. Control V, I mean. Control V is for paste. Control C is for copy. There we go. Paste that. And then we need to change this to whatever it says over here. Front kick anim. In fact, we could just copy that name. Control C, Control V. There we go. Front kick anim. Cool. All right, now here, here's our hook. We're gonna keep the sound the same. Hook, Control C, Control B. Let's call that front punch. Oh, front punch, front kick. I mean, sorry, front kick. All right, can strike. That's our D bounce, and we don't want to strike for dead. Um, we'll go ahead. We're gonna set that set the can strike to false while we're doing our kick. This is going to become front. Kick anim as our track, we turn on and off that we got from the humanoid. It's already loaded. Did I name that wrong? Oh, front kick track. Let's just call it front kick anim track. Keep it consistent naming. Hook anim track, front kick anim track. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there we go. We got it. And here we're going to send to the server. We're going to send our message to the server saying, hey, do a damage for a front kick so we need to give a strike type as front kick and then hook cooldown do we have a front kick cooldown we do all right and then we're going to free up our can strike debounce flag so we could do something else and this is the user input service where we did our hook right we caught the hook key which is an f for our key code let's go ahead and do a control c control v and now we want to hook things up for our front kick key. Front kick key. Right? And we want to do a front kick. We want to do that. Not a hook. Boom. Cool. Awesome. I think we can we can test. Let's go ahead and test it. Let's see if our key's working. I'm gonna to go to view output. Just make sure we don't have any errors. Let's hit a C. Oh yeah. Look at that. That's pretty good. Let's do server side. Let's make the damage work. So go to server script service, open that, strike. And you'll notice in strike, we catch our remote event for our strike RE. And we do some stuff for hooks. We're gonna need that for our kicks. Let's do a front kick damage, a front Kick reach. I'm going to keep that one the same. Do a front kick area. That's the area effect outside of the point calculated right in front of the humanoid root part, whereas the center, that's the center of damage. I'm going to make the front kick area three stud. So it's going to do damage in a three uh, stud diameter uh, blast zone kind of thing. All right, the damage for the kick, I'm going to make that strong. I'm going to do that like a hundred uh what do you call hundred hundred points for our for our damage here we have we get the humanoid root part and the humanoid from the character little helper functions this is where we do our damage check to see how close things are do strike we're going to go through our player list and our npc list that way we don't have to go through the entire workspace we're putting all our npcs in one folder right that'll make things much faster all right, you have a world with like 10,000 parts in it. You're going to have trouble with everybody spamming the, the kicks and the punches and stuff. So here's where we handle 
our remote event. The strike RE comes over from the client, calls that function, and we do some checks for health and stuff. We're gonna get that if statement, and we're gonna do one for front kick, right? The kick type that came over, let's check real quick. Strike loc, where is it? Front kick, there we go, there's a front kick, cool. Just to make sure. All right, here, that's our hook reach. We're gonna have a front kick reach, right? So that gets the position where we're gonna start our damage search. And then hook area, that's a front kick area. That's how much error we can have off of that position. And then the front kick damage, of course, is how much damage a front kick does. And we're done with this, right? We've already implemented our second strike. If you wanna speed things up a slight amount, you can make this an else if. Right, that way you go to see if it's a hook, if it's not a hook, then we do this, right? If it is a hook, we're not gonna have to worry about doing this. So it's a little bit faster. All right, cool, let's try it. Let's see if we do some damage. Should we add a zombie? Let's add a zombie. We should totally add a zombie. We got a Z machine, I put a Z machine there. Let's do, let's do the Z machine. No, we'll just do a drooling zombie. Drooling zombie. He's probably gonna go after Ralph. All right, now remember, we have our NPC folder. We're gonna do damage, it's right here. We need to add that drooling zombie to that folder. Boom. Cool, let's try it. And then we're gonna add buttons. I know it's 11 minutes already, so we can add some buttons too. We want mobile people to use this. Oop, did I not get it? Hold on. Let's look at our, uh, make sure we don't have any errors. We don't have any errors. Nope, I'm just terrible. There we go. All right, so that's pretty cool. Let's add some buttons. Let's uh, go ahead and open that up a little bit. Go down to our starter GUI, screen GUI. Let's add a frame. Let's call this frame, where's our frame? Combat frame. Combat FRM. And we'll just stretch that out a little bit. Maybe make this smaller. Cool. We'll add a button. Text button. Let's call this punch button. We want to do one for the punch and the kick, right? Punch button. Maybe make it a little bit different color. Background color three. I don't know, purple. And let's see. We want to change the size. I'll do like. 0.25, that's 25% of the X on the of the frame, zero pixel offset, 100% of the Y of that little combat frame, zero pixel offset. Nice. And bangers for the font. We can do text as punch. Sweet. Then maybe text scaled. You could actually, let's, I don't know. We can do like 25 for size you have to get rid of the text scale though if you if you put the hard-coded value now i want to i want these buttons to line up so what i'll do is go to combat frame hit the plus ui list layout and i want this layout it's going to affect anything that's inside the frame because it's connected to the frame i want to do a fill direction a vertical for my buttons and then Horizontal alignment, watch the button, it will be center, right? And I also want to change the padding a little bit. I want to have a little padding in between. Let me do a 0 0.02, 0.02% of the frame as the padding. And you'll notice when I add another button, control D, it lines up pretty nicely. Let's make this the kick button. Cool. Let's make the color a little different. I don't know, maybe a green. That's not great. Maybe a yellow. That'll work. And then let's call it kick. It's kick button. Front kick, maybe. Let's just call it kick. Kick. Cool. Let's make the combat frame invisible. That's just holding our buttons. Let's see. Transparency. We don't want to make it invisible. We want to make it transparent. 
background transparency. Here we go. One. Cool. All right. That's good. Let's add some stuff to our local script, right? We don't have to add a lot. We just get a reference to our buttons. Here is our user input service right here. Let's add the buttons by that, right? That's a nice grouping. So we'll do a punch button. It'll be script.parent.combatframe.punch button. Good, we'll do a, oops, local. It wouldn't be a video if I didn't spell local wrong at least once. Front kick button, script.parent.combatframe. Front, what did I call it? Oh, I forgot. Kick button. Cool. Go all the way down to the bottom. Now that we've got those references, and we're just going to put our action listeners down here. So we have our punch button, activated, connect, hook punch, copy, paste, kick button. Is that what we call it? God, front kick button, front kick button, copy that, activated, connect, front kick, no, where is it, oh my gosh, I forgot that one too, uh, that one is here, front kick, I was right, front kick, it's a good thing I'm almost done, I'm running out of, I'm running out of steam, all right, let's play it, let's try the buttons, let's see, look for errors too, so hit view, I'll put window, boom, kick, cool beans, no errors. Nice. That's not bad. Let's try Ralph. Hey, Ralph. Boom, dead. Oh, he's anchored so he doesn't fall apart. All right. That's pretty cool. I think maybe uh, we need to add some pushback. So maybe the next video we'll do like a, like a knockback system or something. That would be cool.